Part two of Pamphylia to Amphilanthus. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Elizabeth Clett, Houston, Texas, January 2008. Pamphylia to Amphilanthus by Lady Mary Roth. Part two. Sonnets twenty five through forty eight and songs five through seven. Sonnet twenty five. Poor eyes, be blind, the light behold no more, since that is gone which is your dear delight, ravished from you by greater power and might, making your loss a gain to others' store. Or flow and drown till sight to you restore that blessed star, and as in hateful spite send forth your tears and floods to kill all sight and looks that lost wherein you joyed before. Bury these beams which in some kindled fires and conquered have their love burnt heart's desires, losing and yet no gain by you esteemed, till that bright star do once again appear, brighter than Mars when he doth shine most clear. See not then by his might be you redeemed. 26. Dear, cherish this, and with it my soul's will, Nor for it ran away do it abuse. Alas, it left poor me your breast to choose As the blessed shrine where it would harbour still. Then favour show, and not unkindly kill The heart which fled to you, but do excuse that which for better did the worse refuse. And pleased I'll be, though heartless my life spill. But if you will be kind and just indeed, send me your heart, which in mine's place shall feed on faithful love to your devotion bound. There shall it see the sacrifices made of pure and spotless love, which shall not vade, while soul and body are together found. 27. Fie, tedious hope! Why do you still rebel? Is it not yet enough you flattered me, but cunningly you seek to use a spell how to betray? Must these your trophies be? I looked from you far sweeter fruit to see, but blasted were your blossoms when they fell, and those delights expected from hands free, withered and dead, and what seemed bliss proves hell. No town was won by a more plotted slight Than I by you, who may my fortune write In embers of that fire which ruined me. Thus hope your falsehood calls you to be tried, Your loath I see the trial to abide, Prove true at last, and gain your liberty. 28. Grief, killing grief, have not my torments been already great and strong enough? But still thou dost increase, nay, glory in mine ill, And woes new past, afresh new woes begin. Am I the only purchase thou canst win? Was I ordained to give despair her fill, Or fittest I should mount misfortune's hill, Who in the plain of joy cannot live in? If it be so, grief come as welcome guest, since I must suffer for another's rest. Yet this, good grief, let me entreat of thee, Use still thy force, But not from those I love let me all pains and lasting torments prove. So I miss these, lay all thy weights on me. 29. Fly hence, O oh, joy, no longer here abide, too great thy pleasures are for my despair to look on, Losses now must prove my fare, Who not long since on better food relied. But fool, how oft had I heaven's changing spied Before of mine own fate I could have care. Yet now past time I can too late beware, When nothing's left but sorrow's faster tide. While I enjoyed that sun whose sight did lend me joy, I thought that day could have no end. But soon a night came clothed in absence dark, Absence more sad, more bitter than is gall, Or death, when on true lovers it doth fall, Whose fires of love, disdain, rests poorer spark. 
30. You blessed shades which give me silent rest, Witness but this when death hath closed mine eyes, And separated me from earthly ties, Being from hence to higher places addressed. How often you I have lain here oppressed, And have my miseries and woeful cries Delivered forth mounting up to the skies, Yet helpless, back returned to wound my breast, Which wounds did but strive how to breed more harm to me, Who can be cured by no one charm but that of love, Which yet may me relieve. If not, let death my former pains redeem, My trusty friends, my faith untouched esteem, And witness I could love who so could grieve. Song five. Time, only cause of my unrest, By whom I hoped once to be blest, How cruel art thou turned, That first gavest life unto my love, And still a pleasure not to move or change, Though ever burned. Have I thee slacked, or left undone one loving right, And so have won thy rage or bitter changing? That now no minutes I shall see, Wherein I may least happy be, Thy favours so estranging. Blame thyself, and not my folly, Time gave time but to be holy, True love such ends best loveth, Unworthy love doth seek for ends, A worthy love but worth pretends, Nor other thoughts it proveth. Then stay thy swiftness, cruel time, And let me once more blessed climb to joy, That I may praise thee, let me pleasure sweetly tasting, Joy in love, and faith not wasting, And on fame's wings I'll raise thee. Never shall thy glory dying Be until thine own untying, That time no longer liveth, Tis again such time to lend, Since so thy fame shall never end, But joy for what she giveth. Sonnet 31 after long trouble in a tedious way of love's unrest, Laid down to ease my pain, hoping for rest, New torments I did gain possessing me, as if I ought to obey. When fortune came, though blinded, yet did stay, And in her blessed arms did me enchain, I, cold with grief, thought no warmth to obtain, Or to dissolve that ice of joy's decay. Till rise, said she, Reward to thee doth send by me The servant of true lovers' joy. Banish all clouds of doubt, All fears destroy, And now on fortune and on love depend. I her obeyed, And rising felt that love indeed was best When I did least it move. 32. How fast thou fliest, O time, on love's swift wings, To hopes of joy that flatters our desire, Which to a lover still contentment brings. Yet when we should enjoy, thou dost retire. Thou stayest thy pace, false time, from our desire, When to our ill thou hastes with eagle's wings. Slow only to make us see thy retire Was for despair, and harm which sorrow brings. O oh, slake thy pace, and milder pass to love. Be like the bee, whose wings she doth but use To bring home profit, master's good to prove, Laden and weary, yet again pursues. So laid thyself with honey of sweet joy, And do not me the hive of love destroy. 33. How many eyes, poor love, Hast thou to guard thee from thy most desired wish and end? Is it because some say thou art blind, That barred from sight thou shouldst no happiness attend? Who blame thee so, small justice can pretend, Since twixt thee and the sun no question hard can be, His sight but outward, thou canst bend the heart, And guide it freely thus unbarred? Art thou, while we both blind and bold Oft dare accuse thee of the harms, Ourselves should find, Who led with folly, And by rashness blind, Thy sacred power do with a child's compare. Yet, love, this boldness pardon, For admire thee sure we must, 
or be born without fire. 34. Take heed, mine eyes, how you your looks do cast, lest they betray my heart's most secret thought. Be true unto yourselves, for nothing's bought more dear than doubt, which brings a lover's fast. Catch you all watching eyes ere they be past, or take yours fixed, where your best love hath sought the pride of your desires. Let them be taught their faults for shame they could no truer last. Then look, and look with joy, for conquest won, of those that searched your hurt in double kind. So you kept safe, let them themselves look blind. Watch, gaze, and mark till they to madness run, while you mine eyes enjoy full sight of love, contented that such happiness is move. 35. False hope which feeds but to destroy, and spill what it first breeds, unnatural to the birth of thine own womb, conceiving but to kill, and plenty gives to make the greater dearth. So tyrants do, who falsely ruling earth outwardly grace them, and with profits fill, advance those who appointed are to death, to make their greater fall to please their will. Thus shadow they their wicked, vile intent, colouring evil with a show of good, while in fair shows their malice so is spent. Hope kills the heart, and tyrants shed the blood. For hope deluding brings us to the pride of our desires, the farther down to slide. 36. How well, poor heart! Thou witness canst I love, How oft my grief hath made thee shed forth tears, Drops of thy dearest blood, And how oft fears borne testimony of the pains I prove. What torments hast thou suffered, While above joy thou tortured wert with racks, Which longing bears, Pinched with desires, Which yet but wishing rears, Firm in my faith, in constancy to move. Yet is it said, that sure love cannot be, Where so small show of passion is descried, When thy chief pain is, That I must it hide from all, Save only one, who should it see. For no, more passion in my heart doth move, Than in a million that makes show of love. Song 6 You happy, blessed eyes, Which in that ruling place have force both to delight and to disgrace, Whose light allures and ties all hearts to your command. Oh, look on me, who do at mercy stand. Tis you that rule my life, tis you my comforts give. Then let not scorn to me my ending drive, Nor let the frowns of strife have might to hurt those lights, Which while they shine they are true love's delights. See but when night appears, and sun hath lost his force. How his loss doth all joys from us divorce, And when he shines and clears the heavens from clouds of night, How happy then is made our gazing sight! But more than sun's fair light your beams do seem to me, Whose sweetest looks do tie and yet make free. Why should you then so spite poor me, As to destroy the only pleasure that I taste of joy? Shine then, O oh, dearest lights, with favour and with love, And let no cause your cause of frownings move. But as the soul's delights, so bless my then blessed eyes, Which unto you their true affection ties. Then shall the sun give place, as to your greater might, Yielding that you do show more perfect light. O oh, then but grant this grace unto your love-tied slave, To shine on me, who to you all faith gave. And when you please to frown, use your most killing eyes on them, Who in untruth and falsehood lies. But, dear, on me cast down sweet looks, for true desire, That banish do all thoughts of feigned fire. Sonnet 37 Night, welcome art thou to my mind distressed, Dark, heavy, sad, yet not more sad than I. Never couldst thou find fitter company for thine own humour Than I thus oppressed, 
If thou beest dark, my wrongs, still unredressed, saw never light, nor smallest bliss can spy. If heavy joy from me too fast doth high, and care outgoes my hope of quiet rest, then now in friendship join with hapless me, who am as sad and dark as thou canst be, hating all pleasure or delight of life, silence and grief with thee I best do love. And from you three I know I cannot move, then let us live companions without strife. 38. What pleasure can a banished creature have in all the pastimes that invented are by wit or learning, absence making war against all peace that may abiding crave? Can we delight but in a welcome grave, where we may bury pains, and so be far from loathed company, who always jar upon the string of mirth that pastime gave? The knowing part of joy is deemed the heart. If that be gone, what joy can joy impart when senseless is the feeler of our mirth? No, I am banished, and no good shall find, but all my fortunes must with mischief find, who but for misery did gain a birth. 39. If I were given to mirth, t'would be more cross, thus to be robbed of my chiefest joy. But silently I bear my greatest loss, who used to sorrow, grief will not destroy. Nor can I as those pleasant wits enjoy mine own framed words, which I account the dross of purer thoughts, or reckon them as moss, while they, wit-sick, themselves to breath employ. Alas, think I, your plenty shows your want, for where most feeling is, words are more scant. Yet pardon me, live, and your pleasure take. Grudge not if I, neglected, envy show. Tis not to you that I dislike to owe, but, crossed myself, wish some like me to make. 40. It is not love which you poor fools do deem, that doth appear by fond and outward shows of kissing, toying, or by swearing's glows. Oh, no, these are far off from love's esteem. Alas, they are not such that can redeem love lost, or winning keep those chosen blows. Though oft with face and looks love overthrows, Yet so slight conquest doth not him beseem. Tis not a show of sighs or tears can prove who loves indeed, Which blasts of feigned love increase or die, As favours from them slide. But in the soul true love in safety lies, Guarded by faith, which to desert still hies, And yet kind looks, do many blessings hide. 41. You blessed stars, which do heaven's glory show, And at your brightness make our eyes admire, Yet envy not, though I on earth below Enjoy a sight which moves in me more fire. I do confess, such beauty breeds desire, You shine and clearest light on us bestow, Yet doth a sight on earth more warmth inspire Into my loving soul his grace to know. Clear, bright, and shining, as you are, Is this light of my joy, Fixed steadfast, nor will move his light from me, Nor I change from his love. But still increase, as the eighth of all my bliss, His sight gives life unto my love-rolled eyes, My love content, because in his love lies. 42. If ever love had force in human breast, If ever he could move in pensive heart, Or if that he such power could but impart To breed those flames whose heat brings joy unrest, Then look on me, I am to these addressed, I am the soul that feels the greatest smart, I am that heartless trunk of hearts depart, And I that one by love and grief oppressed, None ever felt the truth of love's great miss Of eyes till I deprived was of bliss. For had he seen, he must have pity showed. I should not have been made this stage of woe, Where sad disasters have their open show. Oh, no, more pity he had sure bestowed. Song 7 Sorrow, I yield. 
and grieve that I did miss. Will not thy rage be satisfied with this? As sad a devil as thee made me unhappy be. Wilt thou not yet consent to leave, but still strive how to show thy cursed devilish skill? I mourn, and dying am, what would you more? My soul attends to leave this cursed shore where harms do only flow, which teach me but to know the saddest hours of my life's unrest, and tired minutes with grief's hand oppressed. Yet all this will not pacify thy spite. No, nothing can bring ease but my last night. Then quickly let it be, while I unhappy see that time so sparing to grant lovers' bliss, will see for time lost, there shall no grief miss. Nor let me ever cease from lasting grief, but endless let it be without relief, to win again of love the favour I did prove, and with my end please him, since dying I have offended him, yet unwillingly. Sonnet 43 O oh, dearest eyes, the lights and guides of love, the joys of Cupid, who himself born blind to your bright shining doth his triumphs bind, for in your seeing doth his glory move. How happy are those places where you prove your heavenly beams, which make the sun to find envy and grudging. He so long hath shined for your clear lights to match his beams above. But now, alas, your sight is here forbid, and darkness must these poor lost rooms possess. So be all blessed lights from henceforth hid, that this black deed of darkness have excess. For why should heaven afford least light to those who for my misery such darkness chose? 44. How fast thou hastes, O spring, with sweetest speed, to catch thy waters which before are run, and of the greater rivers welcome one, ere these new-born streams these places feed. Yet you do well, lest staying here might breed dangerous floods, your sweetest banks to run, and yet much better my distress to shun, which makes my tears your swiftest course succeed. But best you do, when with so hasty flight you fly my ills, which now myself outgo, whose broken heart can testify such woe, that so o'ercharged my life-blood wasteth quite. Sweet spring! Then keep your way be never spent, And my ill days or griefs asunder rent. 45. Good, now be still, and do not me torment With multitudes of questions. Be at rest, and only let me quarrel with my breast, Which still lets in new storms my soul to rent. Fie! Will you still my mischiefs more augment? You say, I answer, cross, I that confessed long since, yet must I ever be oppressed, with your tongue torture which will ne'er be spent. Well, then, I see no way but this will fright, that devil's speech. Alas, I am possessed, and mad folk senseless are of wisdom's right, the hellish spirit, absence doth arrest. All my poor senses to his cruel might, spare me then till I am myself, and blessed. 46. Love, thou hast all, for now thou hast made me so thine, as if for thee I were ordained. Then take thy conquest, nor let me be pained more in thy sun, when I do seek thy shade. No place for help have I left to invade, that showed a face where least ease might be gained. Yet found I pain increase, and but obtained, that this no way was to have love allayed, when hot and thirsty to a well I came, trusting by that to quench part of my flame. But there I was by love afresh embraced, drink I could not, but in it I did see myself a living glass as well as she, for love to see himself in, truly placed. 47. O oh, stay, mine eyes, shed not these fruitless tears, since hope is past to win you back again, that treasure which being lost breeds all your pain. Cease from this poor betraying of your fears. Think this too childish is, for where grief rears so high a power for such a wretched gain, sighs nor laments should thus be spent in vain. 
True sorrow never outward wailing bears. Be ruled by me, keep all the rest in store, Till no room as that may contain one more, Than in that sea of tears drown hapless me, And I'll provide such store of sighs, As part shall be enough to break the strongest heart. This done, we shall from torments freed be. 48. How like a fire doth love increase in me! The longer that it lasts, the stronger still, The greater, purer, brighter, And doth fill no eye with wonder more than hopes still be. Bread in my breast, when fires of love are free To use that part to their best pleasing will, And now unpossible it is to kill The heat so great where love his strength doth see. Mine eyes can scarce sustain the flames, my heart doth trust in them my passions to impart, And languishingly strive to show my love. My breath not able is to breathe least part Of that increasing fuel of my smart. Yet love I will, till I but ashes prove. Pamphylia End of Part 2